Hello, Familia. So I have our daily bread for today, and I just am so grateful to God for um, just all He is, and that all He is doing in my life. Um, you know, even if it's just within my heart and within myself, it's been a huge blessing. And so I just pray that um, we can all be empowered to hear the word together. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Starting off at, with Proverbs chapter 27, 5 through 7. Better open rebuke than hidden love. Wounds from a friend are received as well meant, but an enemy's kisses are insincere. A person who is full loathes a honeycomb, but to the hungry, any bitter thing is sweet. <clears throat> I looked up um, some other translations as well, and um, the only differences that I had seen um, in regards to, you know, a person who is full a soul that is full, or a satisfied soul, or the other translations. Proverbs chapter 28 and 23 says, He who rebukes another person in the end gets more thanks than the flatterer. Proverbs chapter 26 and 28, A lying tongue hates its victims, and a flattering mouth causes ruin. Proverbs 29, 24, and 25. To be a thief's partner is to hate oneself. He hears the curse, but will not testify. The fear of man is a snare, but the one who trusts in the Lord is protected. <clears throat> this is Leviticus chapter 5, verse 1. And I did um, both the Jewish translation and then the Holman Standard Christ or Holman Study Christian Bible as well. Um, if a person who is a witness sworn to testify, sins by refusing to tell about what he has seen or heard about the matter, he must bear the consequences. This is the Holman version. It says, when someone sins in any of these ways, if he has seen, heard, or known about something, he has witnessed and did not respond to the public, to public, to the public hall, forgive me, to testify, he is responsible for his sin. Genesis chapter 4, 13, Cain said to Adonai, my punishment is greater than I can bear. And forgive me, forgive me, I forgot <laughs> that I um, had a couple of them that I needed to go into the text. So, Matthew chapter 18, 15 through 35. I read to God for his word. Okay, 15. It says, if your brother sins against you, <clears throat> go and rebuke him in private. If he listens to you, you have won your brother. But if he won't listen, take one or two more with you, so that by the testimony of two or three witnesses, every fact may be established. If, he's, if he pays no attention to them, tell the church. But if he doesn't pay attention even to the church, let him be like an unbeliever and a tax collector to you. I assure you, whatever you bind on earth is already bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is already loosed in heaven. Again, I assure you, if two of you on earth agree about any matter that you pray for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where there are two or three, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there among them. Glory be to God for that. Lord, our Lord has given us the solution for conflicts, and I praise God um, for it. Um, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how many times could my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? I tell you, not as many as seven, Jesus said to him, but seventy times seven. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who wanted to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began to settle accounts, one who owed ten thousand talents was brought before him. Since he had no way to pay it back, his master commanded that he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. At this, the slave fell face down before him and said, 
be patient with me. I will pay you everything. And the master of that slave had compassion, released him, and forgave him the loan. But that slave went out and found one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him, started choking him, and said, Pay what you owe. At this, his fellow slave fell down and began begging him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he wasn't willing. On the contrary, he went and threw him into prison until he could pay what he was owed. Or wait, paid what was owed, rather. When the other slaves saw what had taken place, they were deeply distressed and went and reported to their master everything that had happened. Then after he had summoned him, his master said to him, You wicked slave! I forgave you all that bet because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had mercy on your fellow slave, as I had mercy on you? And his master got angry and handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay everything that was owed. So my heavenly father will also do to you if each of you does not forgive his brother from his heart. The next one that I um, read or have to read out of the, the physical script is 2 Corinthians chapter 13. It says, this is the third time I'm, I am coming to you. Every fact must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. That is in Deuteronomy 17 and 6 and 19 and 15. I gave a warning when I was present the second time, and now I give a warning while I am absent to those who sinned before and to all the rest. If I come again, I will not be lenient since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me. He is not weak toward you, but powerful among you. In fact, he was crucified in weakness. <clears throat> Forgive me. But he lives by God's power, for we are also weak in him, yet toward you we will live with him in God's power. Test yourselves to see if you are in the faith. Examine yourselves, or do you, do you yourselves not recognize that Jesus Christ is in you, unless you fail the test? And I hope you will recognize that you, we do not fail the test. Now we pray to God that you do nothing wrong. Not that we may appear to pass the test, but that you may do what is right, even though we may appear to fail. For we are not able to do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. In fact, we rejoice when we are weak and you are strong. We also pray that you become fully mature. Hallelujah! I pray we all become fully mature and get presented to Lord Yeshua all together in Jesus' name. Yes and amen. This is why I am writing these things while absent, that when I am there, I will not use severity in keeping with the authority the Lord gave me for building up and not for tearing down. Finally, brothers, rejoice, become mature, be encouraged, be of the same mind, be a shalom, and the God of love and shalom will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Yes and amen, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. <clears throat> Psalm 1, excuse me, Psalm 140, I swear, <laughs> forgive me, I don't swear. I admit that when it comes to pain and, you know, just stuff that goes wrong with my body. I, I admit that I struggle to form words and I struggle to talk. But I praise Jesus for the patience he has given me to endure. But also, more importantly, I praise Jesus for your patience. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Father, for me familiar's patience as I sometimes fail to make words. <laughs> Psalm 145. 141 and 5. Let the righteous strike me. Let him correct me. It will be an act of love. Let my head not refuse such choice oil. For I will keep praying about their wickedness. Oh, that's good Bible. Oh, yay, there's the set dog familia. Sorry, I had to say hello to them. Um, Glory be to God. I loved that verse so much, Familia. It says, let my head not refuse such choice oil. Yes and amen, Father. Luke 22 and 48. 
But Yeshua said to him, Judah, are you, or Judas, forgive me, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Let us not, Father God, help us to not. Becoming falsely towards you in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us, Father. Help us to be free of deceit in the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 25, 16 and 17. If you find honey, eat only what you need. For if you eat too much of it, you may throw it up. So don't visit your neighbor too much or he may get his fill of you and come to hate you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You know, I got to admit, you know, it's kind of making me wonder if I should continue sending out the daily devotionals, you know, or not. And so, um, I suppose I'm going to pose that question and ask and kind of see if I get any response from y'all. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall see. <laughs> um, Proverbs 25, because it did, it kind of convicted me. I'm like, Mm, even if my intentions are good and, and it's, you know, the way I want to be treated, you know, I, I don't know. So there you are. There's, there's me evaluating myself right in front of all of you. <laughs> all of you. Forgive me. Proverbs 25, or excuse me. Yeah, Proverbs 25, 27, and 28. It is not good to eat too much honey or to seek honor after honor. Like a city breached with walls, without walls, is a person who lacks self-control. Proverbs 27, 1 and 2. Don't boast about tomorrow, for you don't know what tomorrow will bring. Let someone else praise you, not your own mouth, a stranger and not your own lips. Proverbs 29 and 11. A fool gives vent to all his feelings, but the wise, thinking of afterwards, stills them. And I love that. Thinking of the consequences, thinking of the future. That's the time when it's good to think about the future and to, quote, worry about tomorrow, if you will, if you will allow me or my failure to have a better word to present there. But glory be to God. So we can be complete. Glory be. And Nehemiah uh, chapter 1, verse 3. They answered me, the remnant of the exile left there in the province are in great distress and are held in contempt. The wall of Yerushalayim is in ruins and its gates have been completely burned up. Proverbs 27 and 17, just as iron sharpens iron, a person sharpens the character of his friend. And it's true. It's true. One of the last conversations that I had had with um you know a fellow believer i was like wow you know i can't remember what it was that they had said you know um it's not coming to me at the moment but i was just like wow iron really does sharpen iron praise the lord hebrews chapter 10 24 and 25 says and let us keep paying attention to one another in order to spur each other on to love and good deeds not neglecting our own congregation congregational meetings as some have made a practice of doing but rather encouraging each other and let us do this all the more as we see the day approaching hebrews 3 and 13 instead keep exhorting each other every day every day as long as it is called today so that none of you will be become hardened by the deceit of sin for we have become sharers in the Messiah, provided, however, that we hold firmly to the conviction we began with, right through until the goal is reached. Glory be to God. Let it be so, Father God. You promise us, we believe. Luke chapter 15 and 10. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy among God's angels when one sinner repents. Just a few more scriptures, little lines. Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, or excuse me, Isaiah chapter 63, verses 8 through 11b. For he said, they are indeed my people, children who are not disloyal. So he became their savior in all their troubles. He was troubled. That touched my heart, but also hurt my heart. I was like, no, you don't want my papa to be troubled. <laughs> it was just a really beautiful moment. 
Thank you, Father God. And then the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and pity, he redeemed them. He had lifted them up and carried them throughout the days of old. However, they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he became their enemy and himself fought against them. But then his people remembered the days of old, the days of Moshe. Glory be to God. Let us all remember. Yes, and amen. Matthew 13, 49 and 50. So it will be at the close of the age. The angels will go forth and separate the evil people from among the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace where they will wail and gnash their teeth. Daniel 6 and 23. My God sent his angel to shut the lion's mouth so they haven't hurt me. This is because before him I was found innocent. Also, I have done no harm to you, your majesty. In the mighty name of Jesus, Familia, I pray for each and every single one of us. And I pray for each and every single person on this planet. In recognition of the Lord's scripture in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And I lift up each and every single person to you, Father God. In Thanksgiving, I thank you that each and every single person has a purpose. Oh, bless you, Papa. Father God, make them a divine and beautiful purpose. Father God, if, if, it, if they were meant for destruction, Father God, may you have mercy on them and change their heart instead. Let thy will be done, though, Lord. Your will is best, I know that. And so I agree with whatever you say is best, Father God. And Father God, I also petition, I also intercede, and I also pray for every single person, Father God, all of humanity. And I lift them up to you, and I ask you to help us, Father God, to have mercy and to be pity, pitiful towards us. <laughs> And be merciful towards us and gracious towards us. As I know you always are, Father God. But help us see it. Help us know it. Help us believe it. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father God, I pray for not one left. Father God, I know that thy will be done. And I know that your will is that, and your desire is that every single person be delivered by you, our God, and come to the full knowledge of the truth. And Father God, I believe that. <laughs> I, re I, agree with it. I agree with it. I want it too in the mighty name of Jesus. And so I, I lift that up to you and I lay it down at your feet. And, and I just thank you that we can come boldly before your throne of grace and, and ask for mercy for ourselves, but we can also petition and intercede and pray for other people, Father God. And so I just thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. And in the name of Yahweh, Holy One of Israel, I give you all thanks, honor, praise, and glory because you're beautiful and you're worthy and you're just a gorgeous God. Even if you were to never do a single thing for us, just what you did for us by sending your son to die on the cross for us and atone for every single sin that was ever committed of all time. Glory be to God, you're beautiful. Thank you for all you are. Thank you. You're gorgeous and I adore you. And I thank you with all of my heart. I thank you. Hallelujah and amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, familiar. Bye. <laughs>